Meta developed their own styling solution called StyleX, and it powers their apps like Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and basically anything else that they make, and it's even used by companies like Figma. I actually covered this two years ago when they first open sourced it, and since then it has clearly been battle tested. But I do have to admit, I have mostly stuck to Tailwind, and that isn't because StyleX is bad. It's just that StyleX really shines in larger, possibly even multi-team applications. I mean, that is why Meta made it. Recently though, I saw a great blog post from Melissa and Meta about StyleX, so it prompted me to take a fresh look at it, see how far it's come, and maybe even show some of you who might not have seen it, what it is, what it solves, and how it works. Let's jump into it. Now I'm actually going to start by explaining the magic of StyleX, what it does differently from some other solutions, and why despite the fact the code we're going to look at looks a lot like traditional CSS in JS, it's not. Then we can get to all of the other benefits that come along with this. For a quick overview of StyleX though, we define our styles by using the StyleX create function. In here we pass in an object, then we have these styles that we want, so I have a container and a button. If we expand these objects, you can see the properties on these objects map to CSS values really nicely. So if you know CSS syntax, you're going to know style like syntax pretty quickly as well. You can see we're also able to do some advanced things like selectors and media queries. To do that, all we need to do is change the value into an object. We can say what we want the default value to be, and then we can simply type up our media query or our selector as the key here, and then put the value that we want. So in this case, the color is going to be white, unless the user prefers the dark color scheme, in which case it will be black. Once we have our styles defined, applying them to an element is super simple. All we need to do is use the stylex.props function and pass in the styles from the ones that we just defined that we want to apply to that element. And this can actually be a list of styles as well, so we'll talk a bit later about how it handles conflicts, say if multiple styles are trying to set a different background color, as it is a very nice system. We can see here as well we're also using the spread operator, and that's because this handles setting the class name as well as the style for you. Now if we jump ahead to the build project, you can see these styles have been applied, and there's a subscribe button that you should definitely click. We can also see our first difference in style X. If we take a look at inspect element here, we can see that it has a load of different classes on my container as well as my button, and they also look very random. This is because what StyleX has done is at build time, it's run a compiler and seen the styles that we've defined in our StyleX create function, like our border radius of 18 pixels and a border style of none, and it's extracted them into a static CSS file that is ready to go at build time, so there is no JavaScript needed. If we actually take a look at the build CSS file, you can see how it's done this. It is utilizing atomic CSS. So it's taken all of the styles that we define on the object, like border radius of 18 pixels and the border style of none here, and it's given each one its own individual class. This way, it is now going to be reusable as well. So if I set a border style of none somewhere else in my code base, it will now reuse this class instead of creating a new one. It's actually pretty similar to the end result that you get with Tailwind, as Tailwind is also atomic CSS, just obviously in this case we're defining our styles through JavaScript. So with StyleX we actually get a really nice system where we get the ergonomics of CSS in JS, but with the performance of static atomic CSS. We get better performance thanks to the fact there's no JavaScript needed in actually delivering these styles after build time, and the atomic CSS means that our CSS size is going to plateau as our application grows, as it can simply reuse the class names. In fact, Meta apparently reduced our CSS size by 80% by switching to StyleX. And it's not only about performance. Now that we've kept the CSS written in JavaScript, we get a few other developer experience advantages and one really powerful one. For the simpler advantages, the first one is the way styles are merged is nice and deterministic, as it's the same way that objects are merged in JavaScript, where the later object gets precedence over the previous one. We can see that down here where I'm using multiple styles, so I have styles.red and styles.blue, and they both try and set a color, but in this case, color blue wins since it was the last one in that list. Being in JavaScript means conditional styling is also super simple, as we can just use patterns like ternary expressions or the and and operator, and we can do that within the props function itself. So in this case, it's checking the state value and changing the color based on that. In fact, StyleX works really nicely with React state and context patterns. Patterns. But the best and most powerful advantage, in my opinion, comes through the type safety that we're able to achieve. StyleX can give you type safe APIs, type safe styles, and type safe themes. For an example of this, imagine I'm building out a component library where I want the components to have default styles that we can define in the component itself, but I also want it to be flexible so we can pass through StyleX styles to the component and override them. You can see here I have a basic card component, and we're simply just merging the styles that we get through as a prop with the base styles that we've defined in here. Now to actually type out this styles prop, we can use the StyleX styles type that we get from StyleX. This is simply saying it will allow any 
any styles that come from the style X create function. This means that when I actually use my basic card component like I have here, I can pass through any custom styles that I want from style X to change the way that component looks entirely. But that might be a little bit too much customizability. So what we can do with the style X styles type instead on our basic card component is we can say what we want to accept. So in this case, it's only going to allow setting the border color and the color. And for border color here, we're even limiting the options that are able to be passed through. So in this case, it can only be red, blue, or green. If we do pass through anything else, as we can see in my app.tsx, this is going to throw a big TypeScript error. That's because we're trying to apply styles to this that it won't accept. Another choice you have for limiting styles with TypeScript is the StyleX styles without type. This one is simply going to allow all properties except for the ones that we specify in here. So it'll allow anything to be set except for background color. This type safety is great when you're designing custom components where you still want them to be able to be customized, but within certain guardrails. You don't have to rely on manual checks to ensure that everything looks like your design system. And you don't also have to have props to handle all of the different variations like you might have to do with Tailwind or some other systems. You can just use TypeScript and make sure it's all enforced via the types. The last feature of StyleX that I'll show you really takes it to the next level, and that is variables and themes. This lets you define your design system tokens all in one place. As you can see here, I have colors that I want to use for primary text, secondary text, and so on. And I also have some default options that I want for spacing. And we set these up by simply saying define bars and then passing in the options that we want. And all of these will be turned into CSS variables. Then when we're defining our styles with the StyleX create function, we can simply import these and use them as the values instead. So we have gap being spacing large here and background color being colors.background. So now it's all set up in one place. That means that making changes across our styling system and across our application is as simple as going back to the variables and just changing the value in here. And that will change it for everywhere that we've used colors.background. On top of that, another way that you could change the variable values is by creating themes. You can see in here, I have two themes defined, Dracula and Cyberpunk. And we do that by using the StyleX create theme function. Then we pass this the variables that we want to change. In my case, it's going to be the colors and then the changes that we want to make. Now you only have to include on this object the changes you do want to make. So if we deleted some here, you can see it doesn't throw an error. It will just use the values that we have as default in the colors. It's also worth noting this has type safety. So if I do misspell one of the variables, you can see it's going to throw an error and make us recorrect it. Then to actually use a theme, all you need to do is apply it by the stylex.props function. So before we have our styles.container here, if I add in Dracula and save it, you can see it actually changes the variable values for this element and all of its descendants. So when you combine everything that we've looked at together, you can start to build out a really nice design system where you can have reusable components that have default styles, but they still have lots of customizability within your own guardrails. I can really see why Meta like this system. It does scale really well, and it's where I think they have Tailwind beat. For massive projects where you have individual teams working on different pieces of an application, Tailwind can start to get a little messy unless you add in other libraries like Tailwind variants and make sure that you're keeping on top of the design system through those variables that you define in your CSS file. I mean, I've even found on personal projects that sometimes this can get a little bit messy. You can really tell with StyleX that scalability has been thought of throughout it. And I mean, that makes sense. This is Meta trying to build a styling system that is going to work for them. I'm curious what you think though, and what styling solution is your favorite? Are you a Tailwind ride or die? Or is there another library like Panda CSS or something else that you reach for? Let me know in the comments down below while you're there, subscribe. And as always, see you in the next one.